Alright, welcome to my list of the top 10 worst movies of 2016. I already gave you my list for the top 10 best movies. Now, with every best list comes a worst list. So this is it. Things I laid out in my top 10 best films of 2016 list, and that was I didn't see all the movies in 2016. These are just my personal picks. These are just opinions. Uh, you may disagree or agree with them. And these are, actu these are not actual reviews of the films themselves. All of that criteria applies here as well. Without further ado, I am going to get started with the list, so my, I'm going to go in descending order. So this is going to be my number 10 pick. <laughs> Alright, clocking in at number 10 may not be one of the worst movies of the year. It was for me because it was so disappointing, even though the two in that were before it in the universe were also terrible. I had high hopes for this movie. Number 10 is Suicide Squad better from the guy who wrote Training Day and End of Watch, two of my favorite cop movies. You like three and a half minute music videos? This one's a two hour one. That's all this movie is, is a fucking music video. Not only is that the only problem with this film, it's just the fact that this film is choppily edited, poorly directed, really poorly written, no characterization whatsoever, uh, some bad acting sprinkled in there? Who thought Joel Kinnaman was a good choice for Rick Flagg? An awful, awful, awful villain with a plot that's been done a hundred times before, but way better than it was done in this piece of shit. <laughs> My pick for number nine, When the Bow Breaks. I don't even have to say anything to describe this movie. It sucks. <laughs> my pick for number eight is a movie you might actually see in my bookcase behind me because I bought the Blu-ray before actually watching it, so life lesson, don't ever do that. Film is criminal. It has a very good cast. That's the only thing it has. That's what attracted me to buy this at Best Buy, but I watched it and the action was dirty and I was like no this shouldn't be happening it took itself way too seriously for a film that really revolves around a inmate getting the memories of a dead CIA agent it's kind of like face off but not as cool it makes no sense why would the CIA want to implant memories from their dead agent into some random death row inmate in what world does that make sense and like I said, it takes itself way more seriously than it should. A movie with that kind of premise should be fun, but it's not. It's too serious, didn't crack a smile, and it's got a lame excuse for a villain. One of the lamest ever. I guess I gotta bite the bullet on this Blu-ray then. <laughs> Number seven, are we all sick? of these young adult novels by now, The Fifth Wave. What I remember, this was the first movie released in 2016, I believe, or one of the first? Yeah, because it's a January movie. That should tell you everything. It's another young adult novel being adapted into film, and do we need more of these? I mean, come on. Bored the living shit out of me. I was like, all right, the waves are coming. I don't care. Can something actually interesting happen? This movie succeeds at one thing, and that one thing is putting you to sleep. <laughs> oh, you thought that was the only young adult novel adaptation that was going to make it onto this list? <laughs> Think again. Thank you, Allegiant. Alright, now I'm not gonna lie, I liked the first Divergent movie, I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, I thought it was, eh, alright, same with Insurgent, I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's, it's alright, eh, Allegiant, Allegiant just sucks, I was like, ah, oh, oh my god, how did they screw that up? This movie is so bad that this, they're actually adapting the final novel, and they split it into two parts, cause, you know, all these studios want money nowadays, so I guess that it's three books and it's going to be four movies. They actually were going to name the fourth movie Ascendant and it was going to be theatrically released. This movie 
sucked so much and didn't make any money at the box office that that fourth movie is now going to premiere on TV. That should tell you how bad Allegiant is. You remember that movie from the 90s, Independence Day, that, it, while not a good movie, it's a good summer popcorn flick and that it's entertaining as hell? Yeah, it has a sister now called Independence Day Resurgence. This is a blockbuster that should have come out in January, probably, because it was that bad. When was the last time Roland Emmerich made a good movie? I, I, I can't even think of it. The first half I was watching it, I was like, alright, you know, it's, it's boring, but I understand this is probably build up to, you know, the aliens coming back. Second half. What the hell was that? Real focus in this movie. And that's the big problem with it. It focuses on something for the first half and then these stupid lame kids in the second half. I was bored shitless. <laughs> or, nobody saw this movie except for like two people. One of them was me. And quite frankly, I don't blame anybody for not seeing this movie. Because Max Steel blows! Steel is proof that you just can't make a movie out of a toy line. This type of film is really what worries me about the new Power Rangers movie. This is my fear that the shittiness of this film is what's going to carry over into the Power Rangers movie, although I don't think it's the same studio. But just looking at this, I'm like, this is how Power Rangers can fail. I'm a firm believer that the only reason why this film was made was because the studio was worried that they were going to lose the film rights to this property and they had to push a film out and they're like, if we can do that, it can start a franchise. Too bad, your movie sucks. It ain't going to start a franchise. Garcia's in this movie, he's the villain. Right away when he shows up, you're like, yep, you're the villain. And you're collecting a hefty paycheck. Must be great to be you right now. Thing sucks, the action scenes, when they happen, I guess they're okay. But, I mean, you know, Max Steel has got to be the dumbest character ever. Number three, this movie got really terrible reviews, but the director of the movie has firmly stated that those reviews are wrong and he'll probably fight anybody that tells him otherwise. Gods of Egypt. Number three, this movie got really terrible reviews, but the director of the movie has firmly stated that those reviews are wrong and he'll probably fight anybody that tells him otherwise. Gods of Egypt. Jamie Lannister, what were you thinking? Why is Nikolaj Costa Waldo in this movie? Why? Why? Did he really think this would be a good idea to pass time in between Game of Thrones seasons? He was probably just like, yeah, I got some free time. I want to film a movie. All right, Gods of Egypt, that's the one. Does Jamie die next season? If you want to watch Gerard Butler overact, watch this movie. If you want to watch shitty CGI, watch this movie. You want to watch a shitty plot, watch this movie. I sure as hell ain't watching this film again. I'm going to take a minute to pause here because Gods of Egypt will probably top everybody's list for worst movie of the year. Not me. My number one and two pick. I had to go back and forth between which one was worse, in my opinion. They may not necessarily be bad movies, but they are the two that frustrated me the most. And that's why they are numbers one and two. I'm going to give you my number two first and then my number one. Like I said... I couldn't decide which one I wanted to put where. Originally, my number one was my number two, and my number two was my number one, but I have since flip-flopped them. So, now I will get into my top two least favorite movies of the year. Like I said, may not be the two worst, but definitely the two that pissed me off the most. <laughs> two is another film in which the director of the movie says the reviews are wrong and has called out fans of this series 
that thought the movie was going to suck before they even saw the movie because the trailer sucked, and quite frankly, it did. I'm sorry, Paul Feig. But Ghostbusters was not a good movie make a list for a lot of people but the thing is is that I heard it wasn't as bad as people wanted it to be and I knew it wasn't going to be good but a lot of people said it was just kind of in the middle for me it's not the fact that the Ghostbusters are now women it's who they cast to play them none of these comedians are funny I don't find Melissa McCarthy Kristen Wiig Kate McKinnon and especially Leslie Jones funny not one single time did I laugh did I even chuckle I was not at all amused from this movie. I should be. The first two Ghostbusters. Say what you want about the second one. The second one. Ghostbusters 2 is a better film than this movie. Not to mention this movie is basically just a remake of the first one. They had to retitle this film for home release and call it Ghostbusters Answer the Call so they could make some money back that they lost because nobody saw this movie and quite frankly I don't blame them because it's not funny. And no Paul Feig it's not because they're women. It's because they're women that aren't funny. I watched this a week ago and I was like Chris, Hem Chris Hemsworth's the only like somewhat decent part you know i mean even he doesn't care it's just this type of comedy is not funny that's why i have spy that's why i'm kind of afraid to watch spy because i'm gonna be like i don't find it funny but i think if if you're gonna go i have no problem with them going down the whole women route but like make it like an actual sequel don't make it like a reboot and then like have the original cast come back i know harold ramus is dead but have them come back and just pass the torch, you know, kind of like the new Star Wars is doing? Kiss about this movie, I'm done talking about it. In conclusion, Ghostbusters sucks, don't watch it. New one, that is. The first one's an all-time classic. The second one's a far superior film. Those of you that hate Ghostbusters too, you might actually like it now. We are down to my number one choice for worst film of 2016. Like I said, may not necessarily be the worst, but this is the one that frustrated me the most. I thought it was Ghostbusters, but it is not. My number one least favorite film of 2016. Deep breath, because I know I'll probably go on a tangent about this movie, and I don't want to. But this movie is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice review this movie so I have a lot to say so trying to condense it all into as short amount of time as possible I'll do the best I can Whew. here we go it looks like a graphic novel that didn't translate well onto screen the characters are non-existent in this movie Superman I don't I don't like this version of Superman I don't understand it this movie really becomes Lois Lane the movie the subplot takes precedence over the main plot and it really pissed me off and Superman fight each other for three minutes in a two and a half hour runtime. The fight is not really all that interesting, and the way that the fight ends is the worst plot device you could ever use in the history of mankind. Jesse Eisenberg, aka Pipsqueak, because that's what I call him now, he really sucked as Lex Luthor. Motivations aren't clear in this film. You don't know why Batman wants to fight Superman, you don't know why Superman wants to fight Batman, and then when you find out, you're just like... I give up. I give up. They connect their universe because they're trying to connect to... They connect their universe because they're trying to compete with Marvel, but they do it in the most lazy way possible, in the dumbest way possible, and in a way that I just can't accept, and I am officially... I might just have to call it quits with the DCEU. There is a lot more wrong with this film that I can't squeeze in. There's like one good scene, and that's the warehouse scene, but even that gets ruined when it ends. This is a film that disrespects its characters. It takes away the core of what makes those characters those characters, especially Superman. <sighs> Alright, I'm done. I don't want to talk about this film anymore. Because now I'm ready to go on a tangent, and I'll just leave it at that. So much more wrong with it. But, yeah. Things I just can't seem to let this go. For those of you wondering what the Ultimate Edition cut is like compared to the theatrical cut, it's just... A half hour tacked on for no reason. Really, I mean, it just brings it up from a two and a half hour movie to a three hour movie, and you don't give a shit either way. There's some things that are explained, but it doesn't change the movie. Just like how the Suicide Squad extended cut doesn't change the movie. If it was a whole new movie that actually respected the characters, 
then yeah, I'd probably be all for it. This movie showed me that Suicide Squad was going to suck, even though I thought it had potential. I went in with Suicide Squad with an open mind. Now, I have no open mind for anything DC. Wonder Woman is going to suck. If that sucks, they're going to roll out Justice League. If Justice League is awful and gets bad reviews, they need to stop. Seriously. And reboot the entire thing. A list of the top 10 worst movies of 2016 that I saw, and in my opinion, I will have a list of top 10 underrated slash overlooked films of 2016 coming out probably next week. I know that these lists are super late. My apologies. I'm doing them when I have time. However, you can check out our other videos, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. I'll leave our logo and some videos you can check out at the end of this video. Hit that logo and subscribe to our channel to go insane with the mad guys.